Yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy Grip and Rip Sports Cards back here with another video for you guys today. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the 2023 Tops Update Checklist officially revealed. And we're going to talk all about it, who's in it, and honestly, my low expectations for this set. Uh, of course, as we have talked a little bit about in the, in the in the past, we'll talk a little bit more about today, officially. So before we get into that, thank you guys so much for joining me. Can we get 100 likes on this video? That would be awesome if you guys can do that for me. 100 likes at minimum on this uh, video would do uh, a lot for me. So thank you guys for that. That helped me grow the channel. And speaking of growing the channel, we are doing a giveaway. We are giving away hobby packs of Series 2. All you got to do to enter is be publicly subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications for all the content on the channel, and last but certainly not least, leave a comment on your all-star representatives on your favorite team, and I'll pick the winner once we hit 7,000 subscribers. So there is that, and of course, channel of the month. So shout out to Sports Card Ripping Teacher. He is the channel of the month for the month of September. If you want to win the channel of the month in October, all you got to do is, if you're a sports card YouTuber, let me know what kind of sports card videos you make. That's all you got to do. In every submission, I'm going to watch, and we will come to a conclusion October 1st who the winner of October is. We're going to do this every month, uh, so hopefully you guys participate, because I'd you know, i I'd love to grow this community. That's what I'm trying to do, man. So hopefully uh, you guys participate in that. And last thing I just want to talk about here for a second... If my voice sounds weird, it's, I'm still sick. I've literally been sick enough for like 10 days. Awful. <coughs> I have a cough that just will not go away. Um, I might have to go to the doctor. I don't know what they could possibly do for me at this point. But it might get to that point. So apologies again if you hear me coughing. The sniffles are gone, but coughing is uh, still there, unfortunately. So you'll, you'll hear me cough. So just, just bear with me here, okay? I don't make, you know, I, I, I don't skip videos, you know. I have literally made a video for the last year and eight months, almost two years now at this point, straight. Haven't missed a singular day, and I take pride in that because you know what? I am the longest active uploader in the hobby right now, and I am not letting that streak go. I'm not letting it go. I can have the freaking flu. I'll still be doing this. You know, I, I have done that actually in the past, so, you know, nothing will stop me. You know, nothing. You know, literally nothing. Uh, just knock on wood there, just in case, you know, any bad shit ha happens, but uh, you never know, you never know, but luckily I'm, I'm in pretty good health for the most part, so there's that, so let's get into it, let's get into it, 2023 Tops Update, 2023 Tops Update is about three and a half weeks away, three and a half weeks away from 2023 Tops Update, Update is usually a set, you know, every year that people get really excited for. I mean, in years past, let's go over 2018, phenomenal. 2019, mid. 2020, god awful for obvious reasons. 2021, eh. Eh, okay, it's not great. And 2022, phenomenal. I mean, 2022 and 2018 are by far the clear standouts over the last five to six years. Clearly. Not even close, right? 2023, looking like another eh year. Looking like it. Looking like it. Um, I had a feeling this is going to happen. And of course, we have talked about this in the past a little bit. Uh, but officially, you know, via Cardboard uh, or Card Insider, Sports Card Insider on um, Twitter. Uh, I think I said his name right. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think that's his name. He had a list of the rookies uh, today on Twitter. So the checklist is out there. And of course, all we care about is the rookie checklist. So... You know, the rookie checklist is what everyone buys update for. I mean, if you're not buying update for the rookie checklist, then what are you doing? That's literally what update's about. I mean, sure, some people buy update for their favorite players, maybe going, you know, coming to their team or, you know, like maybe going to another team or something like that. But, you know, like 99.9% like .9 of people buy update for the rookie class. I mean, like, come on now, right? But, you know, here's the thing. This year's a little different, man. This year's a little different. So... You know, in years past, you know, look, let's let's use last year for an example. You know, last year, the rookie checklist was great. You know, you had Bobby Witt, you had Julio Rodriguez, Spencer Torkelson, although, I mean, they had rookie cards plenty before that, but official rookie cards in that set. You had, who else you have? You had O'Neill Cruz, you had a player not to be named no more. 
He had rookie debuts of literally everybody. He had Spencer Strider. I mean, uh, you got Bryson Stott, Jeremy Pena. I can name all of them. You know, I can literally sit here and name you all of them if I wanted to, right? Last year was good for the rookie class, you know, for 2022 20, Tops Update. This year is going to rely heavily on the rookie debut cards. Uh, the rookie debut card, of course, if you guys know, if a player had a rookie card in Series 1 and Series 2, they would get a rookie debut card, an update, uh, signifying the exact day. Like, it'll say on the card the exact day when that said player made their debut. Um, so, you know, this update set is really going to carry uh, on those rookie debuts because, of course, you guys know we had a loaded 20... Uh, 23 Series 1 and 2023 Series 2. Those rookie classes were great, right? They were. Particularly Series 2. I think Series 2 is miles better than Series 1. I mean, my, I mean, Series 1's got some good ones. You know, they got Adley. They got Michael Harris. Um, But Series 2, I mean, Volpe, although he really hasn't showed it yet, will be pretty good. Jordan Walker's going to be pretty good. Yoshida, Masataka Yoshida, Josh Young. I mean, those four right there. Those four right there just make Series 2 better than Series 1 right then and there. Um, but I could definitely see why people would argue that Series 1 is better. I could see that. I could definitely see it. You know, it's just a matter of opinion. You know, my opinion is different from yours like yours is different from mine. I mean, that's the great thing about America. You have an opinion to do whatever and, and say whatever you want. It's your opinion, right? That's, that, you know, it's your opinion. But the rookie debut class is definitely going to carry... 2023 tops update the rookie checklist like the actual rookie first time rookie checklist is really not there it's really not you got two position players really that are worth anything and that is matt mcclain which we all know was going to be in the set because he literally just got his first rookie card uh literally like last week and you got patrick bailey who is the uh switch hitting catcher for the giants so, really, you really got not much. You got Bobby Miller. That's cool, I guess. But he's a pitcher. So, pitcher cards really don't amount to much unless it's like a huge, low-numbered, paralleled card, right? But outside of those two guys, there's not much. Now, there's a lot of rookies. I will say that. There's a ton of rookies. Like, my Pirates have, like, literally, like, five of them. Like, we have Drew Madge, who's, like, not even in the league no more. But it was a cool story, if you guys remember that, this past year. Uh, Colin Holderman, a Pirates reliever. Jose uh, Fernandez, I think his name is. I don't even know. Hernandez, I don't even know. Um, he has a rookie card. Uh, we have a lot of lower-end rookie cards, like, for relievers in, in the Pirates set. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, the majority of update this year is a lot of lower-end rookies, unfortunately. Matt McClain is easily, 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 easily the best rookie card in Update this year. No doubt about it. Not even close. Patrick Bailey is a good second. He bats like 250. He has no PS, I believe, around 800 or something like that. We just did a top most valuable. He was in the, in the checklist. So he's a very serviceable, serviceable player. But it's not the player that's like, oh my god, I need to go get this set, you know. Which I, you know, in hindsight, in hindsight, I get that they got to sell Series 1 next year. I understand that. But we should have really used some of those rookies that are in this set this year. Like an Ellie De La Cruz, a Henry Davis, an Andy Rodriguez, you know. I mean, I know it's too late for like a Pete Crow Armstrong or something like that. Or like a, you know, a something like that. Or a, Mauricio, or a Ronnie Mauricio or something for the Mets. Or Jason Dominguez. I get that it's too late for those guys. But those guys that I just mentioned should be in Series 1 next year. Right? Here's what I don't understand. And I get this is not completely on tops. I get it. This is actually something to do with the MLBPA as well. Because they throw a wrench in this as well. You know, Ellie made his debut literally like two weeks after Matt McClain. Matt McClain has a rookie card and update. What stopped them... And then, by the way, Henry Davis literally got called up, like, literally, like, five days after Ellie, by the way. So, what is stopping them from putting those guys in there? I know they're not in a crunch for time in June. That's when they got called up. They got called up in June. And then Andy Rodriguez is not too far after Henry uh, Henry Davis in, in the Pirates call-ups. So, what is the actual deal here? Like, like I don't understand, like... 
you see how bad update's going to be. Update, I'll tell you right now, is not going to sell like it did last year. Last year was a, we were, we were, I always say this, we were blessed with how good that set was. That set was just on par with 2018 update, except it was just a little bit printed more, so it's not as rare as 2018. But my point still stands. In terms of greatness in the checklist, it's going to be right there with it. You know, we were really lucky and fortunate last year to have that set be as good as it was. Why was it as good as it was? Because Tops held back literally every rookie that should have been in Series 2, like a Seiya Suzuki, a Julio, a Bobby Witt. Those guys all got called up on opening day. You know, like look at, a, look at an example this year. Jordan Walker and Anthony Volpe were both called up on Major League, on Major League opening day this year, right? They had rookie cards in Series 2. Last year, J-Rod, Bobby Wood, and Torkelson, same scenario, didn't get a rookie card officially. Now, they had short prints and disastrous short prints and chrome and things like that, but their official rookie card wasn't in an update until October of 2022. So, it's not making any sense here. It's not really adding up, to me at least. You know, it makes no sense. We could have certainly got an Ellie De La Cruz and Henry Davis in 2023 tops update absolutely 110 percent could have gotten them but we didn't and this year's update is going to suffer it is it's not going to sell as good as you as you would expect it to be because let's be honest with ourselves here i know reds fans agree with me because i said this a couple weeks ago and they agreed with me on this opinion so i'll say it again is matt mcclain a big enough superstar to sell this set the answer to that is no if you're banking on him as the top one number one real rookie card, and I'm not talking about the rookie debuts, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother situation with that. But looking at it as the first real rookie for a player, you're telling me that you're gonna solely base this release off of one good rookie, and he is really the only serviceable rookie now Patrick Bailey is serviceable he's a catcher hitting like 250 switch hitting catcher OPS around 800 that's great for a catcher right so but he's not superstar status is Matt McClain good enough to sell this set on his own the answer to that is no so we have all these rookie debuts and believe me I read the checklist there is a ton of them there is quite a bit every rookie from series one and series two essentially has a rookie debut as well as update so there is a ton of of rookie debuts, which I'm not going to complain about because <coughs> if you buy a blaster box, I said the same thing last year with update. If you buy a blaster box, you are bound to get at least 75% of your money back. I would like to assume because the rookie debuts are going to be out the wall zoo in this set. Every pack you're going to open is probably at least going to have at least one or two of them in there. And, of course, you have the start of the MLB and, and shit like that. But, you know, that's you know, that's retail and whatever. But hobby boxes should be decent. I mean, again, it depends on what you want out of it. I mean, if you're going to collect the rookie debuts, which, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess I will because there's really nothing else to collect. Outside of, of Matt McClain and Patrick Bailey, and I guess you could throw Bobby Miller in there. But like I said a, a little bit ago... Bobby Miller is a pitcher, you know, pitching cards don't really tend to sell that much unless it's like a, a Spencer Strider auto. Like I have a Spencer Strider auto I got from Stadium Club last year auto. Um, but, you know, unless it's like an absolute stud of a player, uh, it's not going to really do anything on the market, you know. So if you if you PC that player, fine, dandy, good for you or that team, fine. Um, but, you know, from an outsider looking in, you know, as a like, for example, Paul Skeens, you know, Paul Skeens. We'll, we'll use Paul Skeens for an example um, for a draft. We'll just throw this one out there as a scenario. Paul Skeens, obviously, my Pirates drafted one overall, right? Let's look at it like this. When draft comes out this November or December, because right, we still don't know when it has a release date, is Paul Skeens realistically going to be the number one most valuable in update? Maybe, maybe not. It all depends on how you look at it. You know, I look at it like this. You know, sure, I'm going to be a little bit more biased because it's my guy. You know, we draft him. He's on my team. But like, you know, Max Clark, for example, he's going to be in the set. He went, I believe, third or fourth 
right? A lot of people might have him as number one in draft because he's a position player and he's really good. But, you know, some people might put Paul Skeens at number one. I might. I don't know. He's shut down for the year, so he's done playing. He played just a couple innings. He pitched, like, no more than 10 innings. That's it. Did really well. He's in double A. Uh, Going to be starting, I think, triple A next year uh, on opening day. So, Paul Skeens, you know, fun fact. Now, heh, let's let's talk about 2024 Tops Update here for a second. Do they put a Paul Skeens rookie card in 2024 Tops Update? Uh, I'd like to think they will. But, you know, Tops, they like to sell their Series 1 for the next year. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Based off of this year, they did with Ellie. I mean, it's not out of the... It's not out of the question if if Paul Skeens makes his debut next year, which he will, just don't know when. Uh, good chance it's probably after June because the Pirates like to manipulate service time. So based off of this year, they I mean, they saw it with Ellie. We saw it with Henry Davis. Uh, I mean, it don't look like, you know, I mean, he'll probably be in Series 1 in 2025, which is ridiculous. But, you know, it's how Tops and the MLBPA operate. That's what they do. The MLBPA, fun fact. Because this you know, was was well known a couple of years ago with the Yoron Alvarez situation. If you guys are familiar with the Yoron Alvarez situation. So Yoron Alvarez got called up like, like the first day of June of 2019. And well before, you know, he could have obviously been an update in 2019. Which would have made that set great if he did. But unfortunately, the MLBPA told Tops to hold his card back. For 2020 Series 1. Fun fact. True story. That's a true story. They decide. The MLBPA decides who makes the sets. So I'm not going to fully blame Tops on this one. Because it's really not fully up to them. Now, <coughs> I'm sure they have their say. I'm definitely sure they have their say in the situation. Because it's their product. At the end of the day, it's their product to make. But the MLBPA also tells them. So, did the MLB tell Tops or Fanatics, hey, we don't want Ellie an update. We don't want Henry Davis an update. Use them in Series 1 to sell the set. I mean, it's possible. It's definitely possible. It sucks. Because now, look, just imagine. Just imagine how good this set would be for 2023 Tops update. If we got all those guys, minus a couple, like, you know, Jason Dominguez would have never made the set. Uh, Ronnie Mauricio, I think that's his name for the Mets, would have never made the set. Pete Kerr Armstrong would have never made the set, right? Because they literally got called up, like, within, like, the last two weeks. So it's not realistic for them to be in the set. But for all the guys who got called up in June, like Encarnacion Strand, Andy Rodriguez, Henry Davis, Ellie De La Cruz, just imagine if all those guys were an update. Look, just imagine how good that set would have been. Just imagine how good that set would have been. But, unfortunately, we're not going to have to wait until February to get their card. Which, fun fact, which I'll wrap this video up with this. Typically, we would have a reveal of a base card design by now for 2024, like we did last year. But for some reason... They uh, haven't re uh, revealed it yet. So that's kind of, uh, I don't want to say worrisome because we're still like how many months? October, November, December, January. We're still five months away from Series 1. So we still have quite a ways away from, from Series 1 for 2024. So, you know, it's interesting. I don't know. It's definitely, definitely interesting just to think about. But I'll leave you guys with that. We'll uh, open this pack here of um, Gallery. How many packs of this stuff we have left? We have one, two, three, four packs after this. I'm going to try to find some more Chrome. Um, next week, next week, um, we have uh, Alan and Ginter uh, out. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that either. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm going to probably pick up a box. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm really on the fence with it. I don't know. I'm really, really, really on the fence. We have a base pack looks like here. Ah, Salvi Perez, we have Tyler McGill, Tatis, uh, private issue, that's, I mean, that's pretty cool, um, Jared Kalanick, uh, and Matt Olson. so yeah, base pack, we got four autographs out of this box, so, so I'm not really, I'm not really, you know, worried about this, <coughs> this set, 
Um, this gallery box I've opened did me really well this year. I mean, we literally got four autographs, and you're only supposed to get two. So I don't know what happened there, but I'm not going to complain. Uh, unfortunately, the names of the autographs were kind of mid. Um, but, you know, you can't win them all. I mean, you know, this set is riddled with, like, pitcher autos and things like that. So it is what it is. So, guys, let me know what you think about 2023 Tops update. Are you excited for it? It's slated for October 11th. I forgot to say that in the video, but it's slated for October 11th as of right now. Now, that could change. I don't think it will, but you never know with Tops because they change things literally a couple days in advance sometimes. So, guys, let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next video.